Welcome back to the Done Deal Show here live in Germany. We'll say live, we're recording it. But we record live, we don't edit, we don't edit. Right. Joined by my man Dizzy, how are you, mate? Very well. German weather is absolutely awful, but can't keep the vibes down. I know, it's right. We want to we go and film for you guys outside and do a big football challenge. But two days running, since I've come over from England, <laughs> rain, rain, rain. And yeah. although you, you, you can play football in the rain, but it's recording it and having camera equipment out in the rain. Can't be risking it. Um, lots of transfer stories to talk about today. But before yeah. we get into them, hit like buttons, subscribe. Also, download by scanning the QR code or clicking the link below One Football. The best one-stop shop for football there is. News, live games, stats, transfer stories, games, quizzes, and much more. And it's all free. Very rarely do you get that level of content, that level of quality for free. So go and check out our friends and partners at One Football. I wanted to start with Arsenal today because it, it has been a very slow start to the transfer window. We obviously Mbappe went to Real Madrid. Yesterday, we got the here we go for Palinia to Bayern Munich. Mm. But very little major deals in the Prem. Chelsea, Chelsea done Dewsbury Hall, to be fair, and toss him. One of them was a free. But yesterday, the Calafiori to Arsenal deal from Brizio talking about an offer has been made. Lots mm. of reports in Italy that monster bids have been made. Late last night, there was talk of personal terms having been agreed. Right. And then today, there are claims here that there's an agreement that has been reached between Bologna and Arsenal mm. for Ricardo uh, Calafiori. And then reports from England that Arsenal were beating Chelsea to his signing and a £42 million deal is very, very close indeed. Yeah. I will couple that by saying there are some Arsenal fans online that still don't believe this deal is going to happen. I'm not too sure why they think it isn't. Or yeah. They're like, he's going to go to Juve. Maybe they feel that Arsenal are being used potentially. But, I mean, there does seem to be a lot of credible news stories that suggest this is, at the very least, close to being agreed for Arsenal. Yeah. Yeah. Um... 22 years old he is, isn't he? Yes. Um, yeah, I think it's an interesting one because I suppose from an Arsenal perspective, does it bring him closer to pipping Man City? Probably not. But at the same time, um, they can't have it where last season they got quite fortunate with injuries. They didn't have very man many major injuries which yeah. set them back. But the year before when uh, Saliba went out, essentially Arsenal fans were like, ah, well, it's all over now. Yeah. Rob, Hol Rob Holding costs us the league. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So they can't have, they need to have somebody there that can, that the, 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 the level won't drop as much. But then also, I don't know, at 22 years old playing in Syria, do I think that the step up to the Premier League might be a bit of a jump? I, I think so. So I, I don't, I don't know what this does for Arsenal fans. And maybe that's why they're saying that they don't believe it. Maybe there's a bit of them that don't want it to happen. Well, there are, there are Arsenal fans out there. Like people, I mean, some of them you don't know who they are because they're, they're hide behind an avatar and name. But there, I have come across Gunas that don't think he's good enough, mm. that believe they're being used, that think he'll end up at Juve. And look, I think that's, that some of that is fair. And I think that it, when it, that's what it's weird. The transfer windows become such a, a weird space in the last two to three years. Transfer windows have always been fun to me. You see a rumor, mm. you talk about it, mm. you debate whether it's good, good enough, or bad enough. Do you believe the story? It's meant to be a little bit of fun, right? But some people, it's almost like it's, it's the election today in England. People treat it like the election <laughs> in terms of you're talking about real, genuine, serious yeah, matters yeah, yeah. that are going to change the course of lives for millions of people. <laughs> and although football is very, very important, yeah. you should be able to have fun with the conversation. So I, I don't disrespect anyone that doesn't think it's going to happen. Equally, though, I'm not going to dismiss all the reports from all the journalists that it's all just made up and fabricated. Mm. I think that there is often just be, Arsenal might lose out to him, but it doesn't mean they're not close today. It doesn't make these stories today not be not real. I think for me, what's interesting about this signing is I I, I don't know if he ain't as good now as Gabriel or Saliba, right? But. There is the potential for him to get to that level mm. or maybe even be better. Mm. And I think this represents an amazing piece of business for Arsenal because it's strength that it's it's genuinely strengthening their depth. Yeah. Could they go are they in the position to go out and buy a 26-year-old center back who is of high quality that wants to play regularly? I've got a friend of mine who's a gooner that wants Anderson from Palace. Right. And I think, well, Anderson's a very good player. And you would probably say on experience and age, he's probably better than Calafuri right now. Right. Ceiling not as high, but better. Unless you're going to pay an absorbent amounts of money, Anderson might just be at a stage of his career where he says, I want to play regularly. Yeah, and unless yeah, there's yeah. an injury, I'm not going to. Yeah. 
Calafieri might be saying, well, do you know what? I'm, I'm happy to play the Carabao Cup games. I'm happy to play, you know, second fiddle to begin with. But when I get my chance, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go for it. And I think that's why Arsenal fans have got to be open-minded about this deal. But if he gets to the level that the, the Italians predict him to get to, yeah. this could end up being, for, by the way, for about 40-odd million. Piece of money. This could end up being a phenomenal piece of business. And also, I mean, I think the other thing I think fans have to get out of the the, the headspace of, um, well, will he upset the apple cart as far as, you know, the players that we already have and stuff like that. It's like all elite teams, the teams at the very, very top, they have two, three players fighting for the same position. And guess what? Your favorite might not play this weekend. Yep. But, but is it good for the whole team? And and I think that's just that's just where it's got to be. You got, you can't have just well. I like Saliba, so he has to play every minute of every game. And or I like um, Gabriel, he has to play every minute of every, every game. That's but, but that's word. that's a modern day football fan for you. The, the, <laughs> the agenda's run deep. Uh, viewers, give us your thoughts. Give us your feeling in the comment section below. Moving on to Chelsea. The, here, there's a report today that claims that Chelsea are interested in the 63 million pound rated Diogo Costa. Mm. Obviously. Look, many clubs have been linked to him before. He had a standout game mm. a few days ago against who did Portugal play? Slovenia. Yeah. That that save from Shisko oh. toward, towards the end of the match, and then Same. doing something I haven't seen every I, penalty. Every penalty, and he's and they weren't even bad, bad penalties. No. They were decent penalties, and he saved them. I don't think this is a knee jerk reaction from Chelsea. Oh, we get a good game. We're gonna because he's been linked to clubs for a long while. Mm. Is that an area you think they should really look to upgrade on? Because Sanchez surely isn't it for a team that wants to be at the elite level. No. And funnily, funnily enough, side story for all the TFT viewers, I had a girlfriend that was Portuguese, right? Like, like lived in Portugal and whatnot. And she was a, she's a Porto fan. So I actually spent, I actually watched a fair few amount of uh, Porto games. And I actually like him. And I think United were linked to him before we got, um, before we got Onana. Uh, I, I think I think he's a pretty good goalkeeper. I I wanted him at United, so I, yeah. I, the interesting thing with Chelsea, and I think we might touch on this later. I don't know what the hell they're doing, but I think Diego Costa. I think he would be a good addition to the to their team. To be fair, I, I've been quite. I feel like some Chelsea fans don't think I have been. I think I've been pretty fair on them so far this summer. Yeah, uh, there was a story that we're going to obviously touch on. I think it integrates integrates well that. According here uh, to, to reports, Chelsea are close to their sixth summer signing. With uh, I'm going to butcher the name here. You're probably better reading than me. Aaron, how would you pronounce that? No clue. And and Sami and Samino yeah, and Selmino. Better than me, bro. <laughs> Not bad for a dyslexic. Yeah. Another young player, fourteen odd million pounds, nineteen years of age. Of course, Tosin, who I think is very good, has come in. Yeah. Dewsbury Hall has come in, mm -hmm. and then it's potentially four really young players. Yeah. So they've still not got rid of the strategy of buying lots of young players. Some will make it, some will be flipped for profit, which is a good business strategy. Mm. But I do think they need a bit more star quality. I don't buy in, because there was talk of Calafuri going there. I don't buy into this rival nonsense that two bad seasons and Chelsea lose their pool. Mm. But signing players like Nico, adding a Nico Williams, adding a Costa in goal, mm. with Tossin and Dewsbury Hall coming in, and the youngsters they already have, suddenly then I start to think, if Maresca does a good job coaching, which none of us know yet whether he's going to do because we haven't, the, the, most of us haven't seen him coach or seen the, the sort of fruits of his labor. You look at it and go, well, that could be a really dangerous squad. Yeah. But if they're not bringing in Williams's, if they're not bringing in Costas and it's, you know, Tossin and Dewsbury always as good as it gets and everybody else is young, I, I'm not going to lie. That I, I have a worry for Chelsea. Yeah. And I know this whole notion of we're going to bring in youngsters, develop them for three years, then they'll be really good. Yeah. I need to see a case in point. I need to see a case in point in football where that has worked. You add three or four, four top-class experienced players to the spine, Yeah, of course that can work because we've seen it with Barca. We've seen it with Man United. We've seen it with many teams through history. So I, as a Man United fan, I hope they don't get Costa. He's brilliant. Yeah. As a football person, for Chelsea fans' sakes, I really hope they do sign some players like that. Yeah, and, and he's young. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, he's like 20. 
twenty six. He's not old. I mean, I'll Google search it now. I'm talking. I don't. I don't think he's particularly. He's not that old. So if he if he if he hits for them, he's somebody that could stick around for a, for a long period of time. He is twenty four. Twenty four. He's, yeah, he's gonna he's gonna turn twenty five in yeah, September. Just so. looking at that now. Yeah. yeah. Young. So so young. yeah. So I think I think he'll be a good signing. And I kind of, as it, I suppose he kind of fits into the ethos of sign him young, keep him forever, sign him to death row contracts. You know <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, but I think, like you said, I think Chelsea's strategy is really interesting simply because you have a, 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 a whole roster of young players. And I think what, what the problem that you might run into is as you start establishing who the actual starting 11 is, I think everybody's at the point of their career where they need development time. So they need yes. game game time, and I think you might upset more people than you than you'll make happy. Yeah, and I think a cohesive unit of players is always important. Like I think what Mourinho always did well is he had some young players, but all the, all of his like key players were like 31, 32, 33, where they don't want to play every game because they just yeah. can't do it. But you're spot on, and I, I think there is an element of that that Chelsea need to get right this summer i think look tossing and dewsbury hall i think a part of that 25 26 years of age mm. good technical football players they need a little bit more added to it and look chelsea could be cooking again next year i, I just don't they might not be and some people are like, terry you said they were going to be cooking mm. i said they could be I, i'm not i'm not someone just going to write them off because they've had two bad years mm. i think they're still too big too potent and there is still so much talent in that team oh, and all it takes is for caicedo to, to do what he did all season in the, in the last three months. Yeah. Palmer to maintain those levels. Enzo to click. And a couple of new signings to look great. Dewsbury yeah. Hall to look great. And suddenly, you've got a team that nearly got top four. They'll be back near the Champions League and, and they can grow from there. But yeah. again, Chelsea fans, your opinions on this matter so much to us. Leave us your comments below. Uh, it's been announced today that Newcastle have confirmed the appointment of Paul Mitchell as their new sporting director. Obviously, we know they they lost uh, Dan Ashworth to Manchester United. Yeah. He has a reputation in football. Mm -hmm. You know, spells with Southampton, Spurs, Leipzig, the RB, um, sort of soccer international group. I don't know. That, that must be the Salzburg version. Um, and Monaco. Yeah. Although it's not a player... A very important piece of business very. for Newcastle to bring in a, a man of this ilk with his CV, with his connections in the game. Yeah, no, uh, I we was we was literally just going through uh, Paul Mitchell's kind of career, and yes, well, very well respected in in you know in negotiations and stuff. So you know that he's not gonna get he's not gonna get taken taken for a fall when it comes to negotiating for players. I think Newcastle needed. To make a statement like this, yeah, because of the way that Man United kind of little boy, no, to be honest. no, they did. And I think, listen, it's really interesting. I, I think Paul Mitchell may have been unemployed when they got him. That's, yeah, not, that's, that's not a, a, a problem, by the way. Some people might do it. There is this sort of rivalry at the minute that Newcastle fans have kind of created with Man United because of the well, I mean, everybody's hating on Sir Jim right now, yeah, especially after the um, announcement yesterday of the redundancies. And I still, I still get people's points of how dare they make 250 people redundant. I've seen Newcastle fans say our club has employed more people since our new owners come in. I'm thinking, well, you probably had a lot less employees than us yep. in, the, in the beginning. Yep. And we've got too many employees. Yep. I, I'm someone who defends a working class person mm -hmm. nine, nine times out of ten. And if we have gone and made all these redundancies no reason, if it's for key integral people that are needed at the club mm. and we've just cut them to create an extra eight million pound a year, which is going to be pocketed by Sir Jim, then I'm disgusted. Yeah. But you've got to show me the evidence of that before. I, I'm not going to condemn a man for doing that until you can, until you can show me evidence that we've got rid of essential people. Yeah. What all the reports in the last six months have told us. And we, this is the irony. We were laughed at by rivals for a good six months. When all these reports come out about the overinflated club, the staff not performing, people yeah. not doing well, all the departments being poorly run. Ha, 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 ha. People <laughs> lose their jobs over it. How dare they sack the people that we just laugh at them at not running the club properly. Yeah. So I, I want to see a bit of evidence around that. But we, we're getting a lot of stick. And of course, one of the biggest things that Newcastle fans disliked is that we took Dan Ashworth away yeah, from them. Yeah, and yeah. I understand their frustration. I really do. Mm. But Paul Mitchell, I'm not going to I'm not going to echo the bitterness by being bitter back. I, I, I just not the way I'm built. It's a really good piece of business for yeah. Newcastle, and look, they had a bit. They had a bit of a setback last year after what was a brilliant campaign in twenty two, twenty three. Yeah, 
But I had no doubt in my mind that they were going to come fighting back this year. They lost Ashworth. They've gone and got themselves Paul Mitchell. Mm. Serious I business. Mean, Serious I, business. He, the, the crazy thing from a United fan's perspective is I don't think about Newcastle ever a day in my life. So where this rivalry came from, I couldn't tell you. But what I will say is they seem, since they got the new ownership, they seem to be a club that's making all the right decisions without at the right doubt, time. Without a doubt. So... To be honest, I don't know why they're looking at United as like, oh, we need to take them take them down or we're the real United kind of thing. It's like, just do your thing. Get back competent. Get back in the, uh, you know, battle for the titles and the trophies and stuff like that. And then you can come chat to man. Bro, we, I've said it for many years. I've said it again. We are everybody's biggest rivals. Yeah. And most of them don't even realize it. And and you see it. As, I I think Man United are doing good things behind the scenes. Yeah. Because everybody's being bitter towards oh, us. Yeah. When we're doing bad things, they laugh. And the thing is, suddenly all these fans care about how Man United are run. None of you <laughs> care about what the Glazers have done for us for seventeen years. Suddenly, oh, we've all got to take. I, I've, I've seen rivals say things like that. Man United are a beacon of English football. We need to make sure they run right. He didn't care when we were lumbered with debt. He didn't care when we had bankers and accountants and marketers making football decisions. Suddenly, now that we're doing the right things that could produce good footballing results, this is a disgrace. <laughs> yeah, I ain't buying it. I ain't buying it. It's bitterness for me. But look, Newcastle fans, congratulations on Paul Mitchell. Excellent appointment. Liverpool make contacts over Lenny Euro. Mm. Real Madrid bound Lenny Euro. Many reports saying he only wants to go to Real Madrid. Right. But... Madrid have not made an approach yet. Liverpool seem to be ahead of Manchester United in this race, but neither club has walked away. Ben Jacobs has stated that Liverpool remain in talks um, with, with the French club mm -hmm. by him. Do, do you see Liverpool... Put, I mean, getting transfer stories out of Liverpool is very, very difficult. Right. A lot of their fans are like, nothing's going on. I don't always think that's the case with Liverpool. Lenny Euro, do you think that's someone that they should be looking at considering they've got Kwanzaa considering they've got obviously Van Dijk they've got Konate or is he too good of a young talent to pass up on I think I think some of that I think there is there's sometimes there's certain talents that you just like you have to get them because I see a world where Van Dijk leaves in the next year or two makes sense and I, I probably I I have him going to like uh, not Dubai to like a Saudi league, getting that stupid amount of money and just like right running off into the sunset. So with the, with that level of talent, the quote unquote Varan regen, I think it makes sense that they would they would be looking for him to kind of bed in for a year or two, and then boom, when Van Dyke's gone, now he's a starter. Um, I I also hope I hope that United are also still in that race. Um, because I don't, I don't know if he goes to Madrid, to be honest. But yeah, I think it's interesting that essentially all the other players, other than Real Madrid, have kind of stuck around for the fight, as opposed to just like, oh well, if he's going Real Madrid, why bother? Let's go. Let's yeah, go. I, that's a bit for me. The fact that we're still talking says there's a chance. And I, I, listen, I'm not Liverpool. Some you know, the Man United Liverpool fans might not like it. I'm not worried that Real Madrid is his preference. Mm. Because if Real Madrid don't come in and doesn't get his preference, what's his alternative? Stay where he is or, or give up football? Go to it's a big team. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's. I'm I'm sure he's still very enthused about a club like Liverpool, even though Real Madrid is his preference. And the good thing about signing him is this: if he turns out to be a superstar, which a lot of people think he will, mm. you're either going to have a superstar on your hands for the next ten years, or Real Madrid are going to have to come in and spend stupid money on him to get him away from you, which means you can reinvest, which isn't. I know reinvesting and making good money and profits on players isn't what fans want per se, but it's good for a football club, yeah. especially if a football club isn't isn't looking to take that money as profits. If it's looking to reinvest it, and the Liverpool's model, they 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 speak very highly of the sort of selling and then buying players. And yeah. Michael Edwards has got a great track record of finding sort of sort of unpolished gems in that way. Mm. So I think it, I think it could be a really good bit of biz, good, very very good bit of business for Liverpool. And I agree with you on Van Dyke. I think Van Dyke in the next 12 to 18 months could be out, out the door. Yeah. He's still a top class player. Yeah. But he's definitely he, his powers seem to be waning. Yeah. And Liverpool don't want to make the same mistakes Man United did, in my opinion, with the likes of Rio and mm. Vidic, is that we hadn't developed their replacements. Yep. yep. They left because they were over the hill, and then we were left with this 
big hole. Smalling and you've Jones. Got, yeah, you've got to get that. And Smalling and Jones would have maybe have been better if it wasn't for injuries. And if they came in, were pretty much first team players from the beginning. And, you know, if, if Smalling would have got developed alongside Vidic for three years and played regularly, he may be, he may have been a much better player. Absolutely. But playing a bit part role for two or three years, missing out on much game time in your formative years, mm. that's what Liverpool need to make sure they get right in this transition, in my opinion. But 100%. as ever, people, we want your views. We want your opinions in the comment section below. Make sure you download One Football. Until next time, take care. Goodbye. God bless. And we'll see you all again soon.